Amen. Good evening. We're going to go ahead and get started tonight. Welcome to the Bowman Church of God. Glad to have everybody here tonight. As you know, we have a special uh, occasion tonight. Every first Sunday night of the month, we always, uh, Sister Dana and I, would go with the youth downstairs and we do uh, our praise and worship and we do church. Uh, but tonight, we're going to do it up here with you guys because we have a special treat and we want to be blessed. Um, but we're going to talk to little Brantley and let him give us his testimony and things of that sort. But we're going to ask now. I don't want my kids to be shy tonight. All right. Y'all going to worship, right? Amen. We've been doing it in the, in the gym. So I'm expecting my kids to worship tonight. But we expect you adults to worship with us. Amen. So tell them when we say out of that grave, y'all got to show them how to do it, right? Tell them. All right. Well, if you would stand your feet, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And we're just going to ask God to have his way. Heavenly Father, as we come before you tonight, Father, I thank you for every many bl blessings that you have blessed us with. Father, even in the storms of life, God, if we would just take time to look, you're always there. You'd never leave us. You'd never forsake us. And Father, even in the midst of the worst tribulation we could think of, if we would take the time just to listen to that still, small voice, you will always remind us that you're there. And tonight, let our worship just, Lord, ring in the heavens, God. And I just pray that your will will be accomplished in Jesus' name. Amen. Worship with them. I was buried beneath my shame. It was my turn till I met you. Yeah, I was breathing, but not alive. And all my failures, I tried, I tried to hide. It was my turn till I. You call my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day You call my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into 
your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all, it's all that I know. The old man knew, Jesus, when I met you, you called my
Amen. Amen. We serve a wonderful God. Amen. We're going to have to do an offering due to technical difficulties. Amen. Our drummer has done broke a drum this morning. Now he done broke something else. Amen. <laughs> so we're going to take this opportunity to take up our tithes and offering as he tries to get this fixed. <laughs> and so uh, if the ushers would come forth tonight, we'd like to receive tonight's tithes and offering. But just worship God and your giving tonight. As I've always said, I'm a firm believer in obeying God and paying your tithes. You may not always have the offering, but God said there's a promise connected with the tithes. Amen. So you just give as you feel led, as you obey God, and I know in return he will bless you. Heavenly Father, as we come before you tonight, we thank you once again for an opportunity, Lord, just to be able to give to you. Because, Lord, the reality is you are so good to us. And, Father, you bless us beyond, Lord, what we could even imagine times we don't even know about father when we willingly willingly walk away from your presence you never give up on us and father i thank you for that and lord tonight tonight take the tithes and the offerings and let it meet the needs father that your will be accomplished and we ask it all in jesus name amen
by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. our mind on the Lord. Amen. Let's give him some praise and worship tonight because he's worthy. Stop 
working. Even when I don't see you, you're working. Even when I don't feel you, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see you, you're working. Even when I don't feel you, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, Waymaker. we praise you tonight god and we thank you for being the way maker and lord tonight as we move forward with this lord the service i pray that something will be said or done that's going to encourage someone's faith lord i know it has already encouraged mine but father i pray that your the testimonies that go forth you will get the glory and that father that we will just learn from you and children of faith god so tonight as we go forward i just pray that your will be accomplished in jesus name amen amen tonight we are blessed and 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 privileged to have with us uh sister robin and brother brantley we're gonna ask them to go ahead and come on up i surprised sister robin at the last minute she didn't know she's going to come on stage but um the reason we did this, <laughs> somebody's proud of her, amen. <laughs> so, amen. But uh, anyway, you got your microphone behind you. You just have to, yeah, you got your own microphone. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. You don't want the one I done spit on all night. No. Amen. <laughs> but anyway, those of you that know, I'm going to get comfortable if y'all are. Um, those of you that know already, um, Brother Brantley is facing some some trials in life and um but you know sometimes the best message you can ever learn is the life of someone that is going through something but trust jesus amen and so tonight we're gonna uh just talk to him and his mom a little bit uh because like i told her sometimes we forget about the caregiver and you know we all play different roles in life but um and i'm just gonna go ahead and warn you some of it probably gonna make you cry some of it may make you angry some of it well i don't know what you're gonna feel but i just do know this if we will listen 
to what he says and learn from it, we will all be better people. Amen. So tonight we're going to start off by saying, how old are you, Brantley? Ten. Ten years old. All right. So we got a few ten-year-olds. Anybody, any more ten-year-olds in here? We got a couple of ten-year-olds. All right. And the reason I want you to understand that age is important because life has no respect to person. And the enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy us all. And he doesn't care who you are or anything. But I thank God that what the enemy means for harm, God's going to do for good. Amen. So with that being said, I'm going to ask a few questions and hopefully let him talk. Thank you, sir. The green light on. All right. Um, Brantley, if you would tell us from from your point of view, what what have the doctors told you? Oh, oh you want mama? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Miss Robin, that's you. <laughs> One of every 10,000 kids has it. He was born with optic nerve hypoplasia, which there is no cure for. He also has a nystagmus, which Hold makes his... Don't stop crying. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, you are. I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. Which, which makes his eyes bounce, and he can't control them or whatever. Um, here recently, he's the one that told me himself that it was hard for him to see stuff that he could see easily a couple months ago. So, with that being said, I said, well, let's call the doctor. Let's do an emergency eye visit. And that's what we did. It was on a Friday. We went at 7.45. And they pulled me out of the room and told me some stuff I didn't want to hear as a mom. But the hardest thing was to walk back in that room with your baby in there and try to be strong for him. And I did. So I called mom after the eye appointment. And she said, what they say? I said, I can't talk to you right now. And she said, okay. Is that why they pulled you out of that room? <laughs> so, so. Some people can't. <laughs> You can't be so secretive. Well, a little bit. Well, I mean, I'm going to find out one way or another. That's right. You're, you're a very smart and intelligent little boy. Thank you. So when I, when I called him, I meant when I told mom, yeah, yeah. Um, I dropped him off because, you know, he's an honorary employee at the radio station. So he didn't want to go to school because he had his eye dilated and everything. So I dropped him off at the radio station let him go, do work, and I went straight to mom. And I just locked her. Good. And I just take told her, it, why? Why? Was there something I had done? Something, you know, I wasn't at peace as a mom. Because knowing there's nothing I can do for him. And as a, a parent, you want to do everything you can do for your kid. But knowing that there was no nothing I can do for him. And Mama, we just cried, screamed. She says, Robin, God has got him. And Brantley knows God's got him. So with that being said, that, that following Wednesday, we was laying in the bed. And he told me, he said, Mom, will you read Joshua 1, 9 to me? I said, yes, sir. I said, do you know what it says? He said, yes. So I read it to him. And I got to the part, do not be afraid. He looked at me. He said, Mom, I'm not afraid, so you don't have to be afraid. And that right there meant so much to me, knowing all right, Robin, that's, you sh there's your peace. You can have peace with this. That God's got him. That Brantley is strong. He knows what's going to happen. But we believe that he is going to be a walking miracle in this church. 
and Brantley would tell you himself that he believes he is going to be a walking miracle. What was your response? I know Mama said it, but you said it in your way. How did you feel? Well, I didn't really feel scared, but I I felt faithful and hopeful. That's amazing. Ten years old, and you found faith and hope. Amen. Where did you learn that scripture? School. (laughs) Miss Nancy Flair, Mm -mm. Sunday school teacher. Um, Miss Michelle. Miss Michelle. Amen. What I'm saying is each teacher plays an important part. Even though you think you don't play an important role, that right there goes to show that what you're teaching, it may be one student in that class, but look at the faith that he has. It's amazing. The He told his mama. He said, Mama, it's going to be all right. But now we're going to get into the part that I'm probably going to get mad at. So we need to pray for the pastor, okay? <laughs> Because I'm going to ask a question that a lot of kids face. And I want you to tell us how you deal with it. Do you get bullied? Mm -hmm. If you didn't hear me, my question was, have you been bullied because of this? Because I want him to share with other kids. You share. You go ahead. What do you, I know you told me one time before, you don't let it bother you. Mm-mm. Why don't it bother you? Because I know they're going through hardships in their lives, and all I got to do is pray for them. Did y'all hear that? He would rather pray for the bully that is picking on him because he knows that they got hardships. That is powerful. That is powerful. We have so much to learn. That's a childlike faith. And that's what I wanted him to share tonight. I wanted him to to let us know, even as adults. Can you imagine? A lot of us are facing things that we're scared to death. And here, childlike faith. His faith is in God. You're an inspiration to so many people. Well, I'm glad to know that. (laughs) <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. And I, I've told Sister Robin personally, I don't know how far she'll have to go in this battle, but I know that they're going to come out. Because the whole purpose of tonight is we want you to understand, as adults, I know y'all are going through things. As adults, we're all facing things. But if we ever stop to think about what these children are going through, I I didn't. I think that's why God allowed Sister Dana and I to start going on Sunday night, first Sunday night, to go and minister with these kids because I don't know about y'all, but, boy, they was up here worshiping, and they was a little bit more shy than they are in the gym, but I was proud of them. Why? Because we're teaching them. Mm -hmm. What is that? I said I'm a rebel song. Yeah, I know that. Amen. And so you know Jesus has got you. Mm -hmm. Amen. So when you picked that verse, you felt like that God gave you that verse? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Because when God gives you a verse, can't no man take it away. You have a promise from God, and you stand on that promise. And I told you, I'm not good at this little interview stuff, but. So, what do you say when people bully you? Do you just go on about your business and pray for them? Mm-hmm. Or do you sometimes just let them know you love them anyway? Both. Both. Amen. That's so powerful. That's an unconditional love that God has given that we need to learn from. Amen. So, you excited about this journey? Because mm-hmm. you have already met a lot of people 
God has given you favor in so many places. Where do you think God's going to take you with this? Where I'm about to next week. Amen. <laughs> hey, That's exactly right. But I don't think it's going to be local. I think God's going to open a lot of doors for you because you put him first and because you have a humble heart. And that's the key. That's the key. He has faith because he believes in what the word of God says. And that's where the Bible says a childlike faith. And tonight we have the honor. We're going to baptize him uh, after this is over with. And we're going to fellowship together because I think this is a good time just to, you know, sometimes we get so busy in life that we miss the simplicity of fellowship. God wants us to minister to one to another. And I believe with all my heart <coughs> that, as the Bible says, you know, the Bible tells us of the story with the my, man that was blind from birth. And they asked the question, who sinned this sin, the mother or the father? And Jesus said, nobody. This is simply for my glory. And I believe that that's what's going to happen. Because I'm telling you, I have not seen such a faith in a long time. I mean, I've seen people have faith, but 10 years old, look at his mom and say, it's okay. Because Jesus has got me. Amen. And I believe more than anything, God's going to use you to reach thousands of souls. Because people are broken. And you're showing them how not to be broken by putting Christ first. So you keep being a voice. You keep going and letting people know Jesus loves them. And you keep never be ashamed of the gospel. And I am so honored and proud to be just a small part of your life. Amen. I thank God he's put you in my life because it builds my faith. Amen. And I know you build others' faith. Amen. So what you expect from here? That's a trick question, wasn't it? <laughs> we got a lot of things we got to get done, don't we? I know we're supposed to go shoot guns and fishing and all kind of things that he told me that we got to get done. <laughs> Amen. But I said that to say all this. I know you're facing a hardship tonight, but if this does not build your faith, I don't know what will. Because a child that can know the potential of what lies ahead can sit there with a calmness and an assurance to say God's got this that's faith church and sometimes God has to use circumstances like these to get our attention to humble us down and so uh, we're going to get ready to baptize him tonight Amen. I tried to get them to get as cold as they would, but they wouldn't listen to me. Sure. <laughs> sure. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> you know I'm going to take care of you. Amen. Well, I, before we get ready, to, do, is there anything you want to say to the church? Encouraging? I'll say a joke real quick, though. <laughs> Wait, is it about me? No, no. Okay, go ahead. I'm trying to see which one should I say. <laughs> Why did the boy take the egg to the garden? <laughs> don't, uh, 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 don't, don't, don't. Why did the boy take the egg to the garden? Yeah. Somebody else that I haven't told <laughs> say something. Don't say something. Never mind. Well, tell us the answer. I don't think we know. He wanted to see the eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we got a comedian in the bunch. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Look behind you. We've had it up there the whole time. Do you want to read it? No, you read it. You said you wanted to read it for them. <laughs> 
Mist. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed. Be for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1 and 9. So now that you wear these shirts that you have on, they're not just T-shirts to raise money. They are witnessing. So you wear these out, and when people ask you, you can stop and tell them this story and tell them about the faith of this young man. Amen? Now, I don't know who all knows, but I like to clarify. Um, as we get ready to go to the baptism, we're going to do it outside, uh, but we got him a warm room that is ready. I got it heated for you. You got it made, so might be cold for a minute but um but the thing about baptism sister nancy has taught the young people and we don't believe in just doing it to be doing it um but we take it serious that's why we don't do it under a certain age because we like for them to understand what they're doing when they're being baptized and um brantley has been explained and he's been uh, taught Miss Nancy's done a great job teaching the children's church. Oh yeah. <laughs> shout no, out to Miss don't Nancy. Put, don't put your head down. <laughs> Tell a shout out to Miss Nancy. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but for those that may not know, we take it serious because even though the water baptism it is just a symbol. If you go down, if you're a sinner, you go down a wet, a dry sinner, come up a wet sinner. That's all that changes. But when you've truly been born again and you've asked Jesus into your heart and you have truly turned your eyes to the kingdom of God. And I preached this morning and the whole time I was preaching, I was thinking about him this morning. Because as I brought out this morning, Nicodemus, he knew God enough. He knew Jesus enough to know that he was a miracle worker. But he knew it because of the miracles he saw. Jesus said to be born again, then you'll see the kingdom of God. You see, true faith is when you can't see anything, but still stand on the promise that you're going to receive everything that God has promised. So that's what this is about. So as we get ready to do this baptism, he has proclaimed, he understands what it means to be saved. He proclaims Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. And I'm doing this in here because it's going to be cold outside. <laughs> and so once we get out there, we're going to do a quick dunk. How about that? Now, you got to get all the way under. So if I had to do it two or three times, <laughs> amen. But it is an honor. And the reason we're doing this tonight, because like I said, I felt like what better time than to give him the opportunity to testify. And church, share this testimony with people. When you run into somebody tomorrow and they're having a bad day, say, let me tell you about this young man that's in our church. You know, if he can have faith, we can have faith. And that's what God does for us. So so as we get ready to do this, amen, I'm going to ask you in here so we didn't got to do it out there. Brantley, do you publicly confess that you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. So when we get ready to go baptize him, it is a symbol of the outward taking place of what has already taken place on the inside. So um, as we do this, I, I, it's just an honorable thing. Amen. So after that, we also have some small treats. We got a cake. That's it. Pound cake uh, and coffee and hot chocolate and some Cokes, whatever. So let's just uh we wanted to fellowship a little bit and just uh if you got questions for him i'm gonna put him on the spot catch him afterwards and talk to him i promise you he'll build your faith amen we love you buddy so we're going to go to <laughs> amen oh you got a joke too
What did the cloud? The question was, what did the cloud wear under the the rain cloud wear under their dress or skirt? Thunderwear. <laughs> well, there was one joke I wanted to say, but... Oh, Brother Robbie? Brother... <laughs> Sister Paula? <laughs> Amen. Buddy, we love you, buddy. But all kidding aside, I just want to thank Brantley for his time and um, Miss Robin because, listen, we, they still need our prayers because... They'll go through battles, but they'll never go through them alone. Amen. So with that being said, uh, Brother Gene, where are you at? There you go. Um, we're going to, if you would, stand to your feet. We're going to. Sprinkle. Okay. Um, we're going to close with Amazing Grace. I, I believe that's one of his favorite songs. And I want to say this. I know that we have went through this. But these altars are open if you want to spend some time with the Lord. Because the most important thing, if you don't have Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you can't have this kind of peace. You can't have this kind of assurance. But because of Christ, you can stand and be rest assured that God is able to keep you and sustain you. So if you need to pray... There'll be someone here to pray with you and pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for Brother Brantley and the blessing that he is to this church, to everyone that he comes in contact with, his mother, Lord, his family, God, the love that they surround him with, this church family. And God, this is not something to bring him down this is not something to stop him this is not something to afflict him but this is something that's going to raise him up lord you're going to open doors for him that no man can close that he will be able to give jesus christ the glory and father if there's someone here tonight that don't know christ as their first lord and savior the greatest gift that you gave us was the ability to choose life eternal through Jesus Christ. So, Father, if there's someone here that doesn't know you, let them, Lord, let them just get out of that seat and come and spend some time in the altar one-on-one -on -one with you. And, Lord, if they choose not to do that, I pray they pray where they're at. But, God, it's time that we get sincere with you because it rains on the just and the unjust. We're not promised tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow will bring, but we do know who brings tomorrow. So, Father, let every life be touched by this testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing this song, Amazing Grace. Amen. You going to help us sing? Y'all help us sing it?